Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to the Sunday Recap, my weekly vlog where I talk a bit about my last week in games and as always we'll start with EVE Online. I had a pretty quiet week in EVE Online, not so much because it's quiet in EVE but mostly because I was still in Path of Exile mode. It's the second week of a new league and uh, I'm still playing that quite a lot but I managed to find a little bit of time for some exploration in EVE Online. This time I took out the Gila focusing on some combat sites and I did find a few but I must say competition in Galente space is definitely uh, higher than it was in Amar space so if you're looking to find a lot of sites relatively quickly in exploration I would say look for quiet systems not systems that are close to trade hubs because there you'll have a lot of competition. Next to that, I also took a couple of trips to Jida. The idea was to do a little bit more trading, especially uh, I was focused on the advanced moon materials where I thought maybe some new opportunities would show up. But I think I was a little bit early because I basically bought nothing uh, over the last week. While uh, doing Eve Talk yesterday, it did show a few advanced moon materials that are currently at very pronounced one year low prices. But my theory that I'm still going by is that a little bit of a focus on Tick 2 should eventually uh, be quite profitable because I can't imagine that CCP wants to keep Tech 2 ships this low in price uh, compared to everything else. I think the, the uh, proposition of how much power they provide now for the amount of ISK that you have to pay for them uh, doesn't make that much sense. I think they should be a little bit more expensive or other stuff like especially Tech 3 uh, destroyers and some faction ships should be a lot lower in price. But we will see if that prediction comes out or not I'm definitely uh, very careful in my buying buying slowly in small batches uh, and looking for those very pronounced one year low points before I jump in uh, volatility in tech 2 still definitely dominated by some of those small tech 2 ships like stealth bombers and some of those logistics frigates they're still doing well and something to keep in mind as well is that we will get another alliance tournament later this year that might provide some investment opportunities as well if I can figure some of the meta out but other than that uh, as I've said I haven't played that much EVE Online I'm mostly also uh, still just keeping an eye out for more information on what CCP exactly plans to do for the faction warfare update and uh, if there's a path for me to take part in all of that stuff but for now uh, yeah I know that there's uh, gate building that's happening probably gonna be a player choice that we'll have to make later down the line by fighting over certain systems um, but yeah, I'm also still looking for that, that gateway to allow basically uh, players that are not in specific faction warfare uh, corporations to take part in these activities. Uh, overall though, still a pretty quiet but fun week in EVE Online and uh, yeah, looking to beef up my investments in EVE Online. That of course means that I spent a lot more time in Path of Exile and I've been hit quite hard with another case of Altitis. So I've been making a lot of characters. I think I'm trying to build my sixth at this point. Uh, but what you're seeing in the background is basically my most successful second character, which is an other Oculist that's also focusing on the quadruple uh, uh, curses but this time going for hex blast to do uh, just really big uh, chaos damage explosions it worked out decently well I would say uh, the clear is actually pretty strong because hex blast itself has an AoE effect if it's hitting a cursed enemy uh, but what's a little bit disappointing is I thought it would be stronger against bossing so the problem uh, with it is that you both need an execution button which is you need to press hex blast on the target and you need a little bit of setup time because what I was using is uh, some of the curse nodes that basically turn one of the curses that I cast which then triggers three extra curses for vixens uh, into an area of effect that after a couple of seconds basically uh, blasts the doom of the curse to maximum and that's when I can get the highest possible hex blast at least for my current gear which is not that great or anything like that but it works quite well uh, why four curses again? Because Hex Blast then takes uh, the lowest resistance as the resistance is going to calculate on. So it does make 
makes sense to try and uh, massively lower a single uh, elemental resistance as well. Now some of the bosses do absolutely melt but some of the trickier bosses where it gets very busy around the uh, playing field are a little bit annoying because I need to watch out for my character then I need to cast the curse in the right spot I need to wait a couple of seconds for the curse to actually trigger you can visually see when uh, one of the curses is on maximum doom doom and then I have to uh, press the hex blast button and watch the big explosion which well on like Kitava fight and things like that takes a chunk of uh, their health pool but isn't like as good in my opinion as the constant stream of damage that that, for instance a minion build can put out without you risking your character which is my favorite playstyle I'll be honest in Path of Exile a pretty passive playstyle that is relatively safe but yeah uh, it was definitely a good experiment I got just into maps and uh, then that map grind is still too much for me at the moment uh, for Path of Exile uh, maybe I need to do like my homework or something like that maybe I need to get into Path of Building in order to really try to uh, figure out what I need where I need to get certain and gear pieces from and things like that to get to that uh, end game level but I'm basically uh, not knowledgeable enough about Path of Exile in general to get like plus 30 quality uh, level 21 gems and all of that stuff I'm playing in trade so I could do a little bit of that but honestly when I reach that barrier what I prefer to do is just try another wacky idea and Path of Exile is really good for that because I, I tried another minion character but this time a guardian uh, not working out that well uh, up to this point point so I now also am trying a bow character because I got a level 68 bow and a like level 67 quiver that are focusing on cold damage so that's something that I'm working on now as well um, and yeah you can just try a lot of other stuff as well uh, strength stacking other types of stackings that you can do that that would be pretty cool and uh, so I've been playing a lot of Path of Exile and uh, despite all of the problems that I'm seeing online uh, with, uh, with the leak and the amount of loot drops and things like that I personally the way I'm playing Path of Exile am still having uh, a lot of fun with the Lake of Calandra leak and that was my last week in games guys thank you very much for watching and as always I'll see you next time